everybody, welcome to another exciting, fun-filled, expeditious, hair-raising episode of Radio Rama, where I show you how to work on radios, stereos, televisions, basically anything that runs on glowing vacuum tubes from the 1930s through about the 1960s. And today we have a Grundig Stereo Console SO-112 US, which means it was an export model. It's a rather small console. I'd almost qualify this as a console that was donated last week. I do not know its working condition. Right away I can tell that the original electrolytic capacitor has been replaced. It's got a bunch of newer replacement tubes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up slowly on my very accurate. Let me make sure it's turned on. Okay, it's turned on FM. And what I'm going to do is put this on the lowest Amperage, amperage settings because I want to see if it's going to draw anything. It's not drawing much, this is what I want to see. It's hard to tell if there's any pilot lights or anything. This thing has a fuse in it too, so if something really bad is going to happen, I'll know about it. It's not drawing much, so I feel pretty confident about that. Bring it up about halfway. Still not drawing that much. Bring it up a little bit more. Okay, I do see some pilot lights up there, even though it's hard to see in the sun. So that's a good sign. Again, not drawing much. Let's go ahead and bring it up to about 110, right thereabouts. Okay, let's see. Is it going to make any sound? It's picking up a little. Audio's there, it's loud. Could have a bunch of dirty contacts in here. Uh, see here. Well, I suspect I have dirty contacts. It's got okay reception, just this very poor audio. All right, so what I'm going to do is pull the chassis. It's actually missing all the screws holding it in, so that should be easy. But I'll need to find those screws at some point. I don't know what the working condition of the record player is. It doesn't spin very easily, so that means it definitely needs to be degunked. But we're off for the races. I'm going to take the chassis out, and we're going to investigate it on the bench. All right, first of all, I see that we have two electroharmonics tubes. These are Russian. They're okay. They're not great, but they're okay. And looks like we have an RCA tube here. And then we have a few, looks like, Telefunken tubes. So, hodgepodge of different stuff going on here. Obviously, the transformer is good because we got... Power. It looks like someone's been in here. And it's not the best looking work I've ever seen. We have, looks like two electrolytics that have been replaced. One with this single value can, and it looks to be itself pretty old. So I wouldn't trust that. I probably wouldn't trust this either. That international brand, that's probably from the 1970s that's probably also worn out or going bad we have a whole ton of paper caps in here and so there's a lot of opportunities for things not to work it, this all needs to be recapped anyway so i'm going to go ahead and dive in it, this is probably a, i didn't look up with the year it's probably an earlier one early 60s because they're still using paper caps you start getting in the mid 60s and you see more and more 
um, plastic film caps and you can leave those alone. These key switches up here, these piano switches, they're f infamous for getting really gunked up and that can cause all kinds of issues like um, your volume, your tone controls, even your band switches, they can all get really affected by that so you need to really clean those guys up. But what I'm going to do is start where I usually start which is replace the two electrolytics which is this guy, the gray guy, and then the underside of this guy. I especially want to check that resistor. That's critical to B plus performance and it's a wire round and that style of German wire round resistor I find tends to go open easily. But first things first, let's go ahead and replace the electrolytics and do some cleanup on the pots and not the pots, it's just, well, yeah, the pots and the, and the switches and then we can take it back over for a retest, see if there's any improvements. Okay, so now I have these three electrolytics replaced. This resistor tests perfectly when, within spec, it's 1K. And now we're going to go in here and start cleaning up some of these controls. you got to clean them from above and underneath. That includes all the tone controls. And you just want to work that stuff in. We'll have to do it from above as well. But those are already moving a lot better. Mo better. So let me get the top as well. Somehow I forgot to press the uh, record button. But anyway, what I did is I soaked all these controls here with cleaner. They want to work it in. Like so. And you also want to get the volume control trolls. Let's see, there's these little slots here. That's where you put the cleaner in. And work that in. And uh, even though I don't think that just replacing the electrolytics will have solved the problem, because I think there's other things going on. Maybe I'll get lucky. Maybe it was that. Maybe it was the contacts. Maybe it's a bad tube. I don't know. But I'm going to test it now. I think it's better to test gradually to make sure that you don't get ahead of yourself. And if you make a mistake, you'll catch it early. So you only go back a few steps versus shotgunning the whole thing, which is something I am very much guilty of doing, by the way. Okay, let's try this again, see if we get any life out of it. We got immediate power, that's good. iTube sure lights up pretty quickly on this guy. Yep, we still have a problem. Basically no reception at all. It's not it's not happy. It's definitely not happy. Whatever that tube is up there, it doesn't seem to have a f any filament. Let's see if I can wiggle it to life. Sometimes the tube sockets get a little dirty. That's the only one that I, I don't really... I mean, granted, it may just be that I can't see it at the right angle, but it doesn't look like it's got a filament inside. So let me whip that guy out of here and see if I can test it. Okay, so the EF89 tube is not good. No filament, so I did find one in my stash. It does have filament, so I'm going to stick this back into the cabinet and see if that makes an improvement. Only the most annoying jingle ever. Anyway, it seems like it's working a little bit better now. I think I've got a lot of dirt still clogging the volume control. FM is kind of a no-go. Let me make sure I've got the FM. Yeah, the FM antenna is connected. I think
think I need to take this out, test all the tubes, re-clean all the contacts, and put it back in again. It's the audio sounds there. Like you definitely hear a loud popping in both speakers. So, we've got a little bit more life, but we've got a ways to go before it's anywhere near considered working, and then we can proceed with the recapping job. I tested all the tubes, and they all tested okay. Some are a little bit weak, but they should provide enough, you know, service for this thing to work okay. Not great, but okay. I cleaned all the pins and the tube sockets, and I recleaned the controls. The one thing I did notice is that the side here where the uh, selenium rectifier is still a little warm, so there's definitely a possibility that the rectifier is on its way out and uh, probably should be replaced, which means I'll need to make a silicone diode bridge as a replacement. But well, that's not too hard. I've done it many times, so if, that has, if that's the case, then we'll have to do it anyway. I really had something weird happen. I should have filmed it happening, but the set initially was working, well, it wasn't working great, but it was doing better. and it fades off that is so very strange so something's getting loaded up in there something is loading down the signal Excuse me, it's burnt. Um, I feel like that selenium rectifier is getting too hot. I mean, it's warm. It shouldn't be getting warm after just playing it for just a minute. Unfortunately, I don't have my multimeter here. I left it at the museum, so I'm kind of like shooting in the dark. It's either that or there's one of these capacitors has decided to... Uh, short on me and it's pulling the shit down so i need to replace the paper caps anyway so i'll just start replacing them and um, if the selenium rectifier is bad i'll go over to the museum and get my multimeter tomorrow and uh, confirm that and then we might need to replace it but again like all these old paper caps inside these guys are just as bad as all the other old radios from this time period they're probably gone either that or i could have a, a resistor that is heating up and fusing or something I don't know it's hard to tell all right well I've replaced a few of them I've replaced one two three four five six seven seven capacitors are all kind of in this area you start getting into tone control stuff up here that's not critical I'm not too concerned about that um, there's not too many more to replace that are critical but I'm gonna test it Again, I want to see if there's any improvement in performance. I've worked on a lot of radios. This is the strangest thing I've ever seen. It's pulsing. that it made a big improvement i mean that sounds horrible but the fact that it's got both channels working on fm and am tells me maybe it's got a whole bunch of crappy capacitors in there just keep on going with it All right, welcome back day number two of working on the grundig stereo and i went over to the museum got my multimeter so now i can diagnose things i've never had a set do what this was doing last night which was kind of ricocheting back and forth it did seem that after some recapping, performance was starting to improve, so I'm just going to continue doing that, replacing a few more of these paper caps at a time while testing. I also got a full-strength EF89 tube, and because the one that was in it was testing okay, but not great. So just incremental improvements will hopefully get this sick radio back up into being a healthy, happy radio. All right, this is one of the reasons I sometimes really get frustrated working on these sets. Because they built the thing in layers. Like, you've got all these caps underneath this rail here, and it's it's not easy to get at. And this, this phenolic plastic material is very brittle. You can break it just looking at it. So that's when sometimes you have to get 
I have a whole bunch of uh, used operating instruments like hemostats and whatever, and you can reach in really tight spaces like that. So, for example, let's see if I can find one of these guys. Here we go. So I use these guys a lot. You can come in like grab stuff that's that's hard to get at. And sometimes if you have a, a part like you did, you need to cut the wiring on, and you can't get your nippers in there, you can grab hold of that, and uh, you just twist and turn it back and forth, and it'll snap. Welcome to day three of working on the Grundig small console, and I got mostly done with all the recapping. It's just a slow process because there's so many of them and as you can see they're in difficult to reach places. There's only a few left but I'm going to go ahead and put it back in the cabinet. The other thing too is like none of the tube shields were installed. I don't think that's necessarily the reason that the radio receiver was ricocheting back and forth like that but it doesn't hurt to put them on anyway. So let's slide this back and over to the cabinet and see if there's any improvements whatsoever okay let's see what happens i don't have a lot of wait a minute did i plug in the antenna no i didn't forgot all right now let's try it my sinuses are acting up i don't have any faith in this working i don't see how just replacing caps would do anything Nothing. It's even more dead than it was yet before. Hmm. Why would that be? It's deader than dead. Getting a little bit on F on AM. Of course. All right, it is time to do some diagnostics. Um, I'm going to get a little stool over here so I can pull the chassis out and then set it down, have the speakers plugged in, and see what the basics are. What is my B plus? What are my vitals? And uh, see what the answers are for that. All right, so I got my multimeter here, and uh, but that does not power up. Well, it'd help if I plugged the cord back in. Hold on. All right, let's try this again. There we go. Now we got lights, camera, action. What? Oh, wait a minute. That's pulling down. That's only about half of the B plus that I should be getting here. Let me check the other. Only 80 volts. That's no good. Uh, let's see. Where's my last connection? Man, my sinuses are bad today. Do, 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 do. Where, where does that sucker go? Where does it go? Oh, here it goes here. All right. Yeah, B plus is real low. Hmm. What could be causing that? Let's 
79 volts, 90 volts, not enough B plus to do anything. So, um, I think it's time to pull up the schematic. Okay, I looked at the schematic going all the way back to the front end of the set and after doing some initial tests, this component, which is the rectifier, is very weak. It's probably about to go actually, and so I'm gonna replace it. Now I used to have a bunch of pre-made bridges, but I don't have any more of those, so I had to make my own. It's pretty simple, I just put a bunch of diodes together, and this is the positive with the red wire and the green wire, I don't have any black wire, is our negative. And then your other two wires go in these corners here. Pretty basic device. So we'll unbolt this and solder in the uh, the new rectifier and see if we have any improvements. All right, so we have the new rectifier bridge installed now. Uh, hopefully, I got that right. For some some reasons, for some reason, I have a occasionally a difficult time with putting thing in things in the right way. I think I'm like partially dyslexic or something. So if you put the if you put your rectifier in backwards, which I've done, you'll know right away. So luckily this has a fuse in it, so it'll blow if that if things go haywire. All right, I'm gonna do this the smart way. I used to not have one of these things, but they're very handy. So let's turn it on and have the volts all the way down to zero, and then we'll turn the set on. Now, if I've put that rectifier in backwards, it'll start drawing amps immediately. Which it doesn't seem to be doing. Let's see. We've got pilot lights on. Now, what more do we got volts wise? About 50%. It's drawing next to no amps. Yeah, that would have. If there was a problem, it would have revealed itself let's bring it up let's see what we're getting here b plus wise it's looking better um even though it seems to be dropping it's much happier b plus for sure Okay, it's stabilizing. That's more like it. Now what are we on? You on FM? Let's try. Fourth twenty. Marilyn, when you were young, you chose a career and stuck with it, right? That's exactly. In primer lugar, uno es elegible para beneficio público con medical, car work y estampilla. También Still getting no FM. FM. AM seems to work. It seems like we still have contact issues. Oh, wait, you know what? I don't have any FM antenna. Right. Get in there. Let's try that. Yeah, FM's not happy. Uh, let's see if I smell anything. Is this? Yeah. Maybe I'm just imagining things. Probably just hot tubes. But this is an improvement. We definitely had a, a weak dead rectifier. Um, now the set's got good P plus. AM is okay. We still got an issue with contacts in the right and left channels and FM doesn't work. So hip hip hooray. Uh, let's put this back on the bench. I found something that might have been the problem. This connection right here. Was right up against. It was like this, like that was touching, and so I yanked that out. And if you look at this, it goes to the FM switch. 
gosh. The other thing I did, and I didn't show it because I felt like an idiot doing it, but the volume pot was not working. Essentially one side was out. And what it was is that this assembly had come a little bit loose and it's all stamped together. And so I took a ball peen hammer, like a little ball peen painter and a screwdriver and put some dents in it to squish it back together. <laughs> and, and that worked. I'm not too proud to say it worked, but I was like, what else was I gonna do? Cause I'm not gonna take that volume pot apart. I'll never get it back together again. Welcome back to day number, I think day number four of working on this. And uh, I decided to download the schematic. And we're going to look in a couple of areas here. I'm going to start with, where did it go? Aha, uh -huh, here we go. EF89. I'm going to check the, uh, the pin voltages here. Looks like I'm going to check the uh, plate. It says we need... Between 210 and 230 volts. Pin number 8, which it looks like is the grid, needs to be 105 volts. And then pin number 9, that's, that's hard to read. What is that, negative 8 volts? And then, of course, we have the filament, which we know is working. So we're gonna. This is basically the the second FM uh, IF amp. And the other thing we're going to look at is the pin voltages for ECC eighty five. Which where is that? Did I print the same page twice? Yeah, I did. I need to go inside and print it. But what I did is I removed the cover of the, uh, the FM tuning condenser so I can expose the, uh, the pins of EC85, ECC85. Because what I'm going to do here is see if I can troubleshoot why FM, the signal's coming in, but it's not really getting amplified. So I think it is an IF related problem. Uh, I don't see anything amiss here. There's none of these skinny coil wires. They're very they're very thin. But we're going to start by measuring here. This is the plate of EF89 and go from there. All right, so the EF89 tube turned out to be fine. So now it's time to check the ECC85 tube, which is a dual section tube, is the FM RF amp and the FM converter. So we're going to check out pins number one and six. We should have 200 volts on pin number one, 125 volts on pin number six. So, let's see if I can do this one-handed. I need to get myself a better rig for testing things. Okay, is that on? Yeah, it's on. All right. That's what I say. Pin number one and pin number six. Oh, I can't even see it. See, it's, it's difficult with these sets because... Where did my flashlight go all right hold on folks okay so I think I found the problem here now, I know this is very hard to film and I it's, it's unusual because I have to have the, the set hooked up to its until um, umbilical cord here so it's not on my bench but pins number one and six are getting basically no voltage it's this pin like that's basically no voltage there's supposed to be a hundred what did I say? That's pin number six. Pin number six is supposed to have 125 volts. That's got nothing. Uh, this is the other pin here. This is pin number one. Nothing. So something is not delivering voltage there. So I need to look further upstream. Now, you, you see, I am getting some radio signal. You can hear a little bit, but it's like that's what the volume cranked. 
So it's definitely got to be a lot better than that. So I just, I just think there's not enough juice going through that tube, which is critical. Uh, correction, my uh, alligator clip had fallen off and I hadn't noticed it. So <laughs> something smells hot. Anyway, pins number one and six are measuring fine. Nothing wrong with the pin voltages there. I'll turn this off since something doesn't seem right. Transformer's running cool. I can touch that, that's not bad. I have no clue. I'm wondering if maybe there's a miswire. I need to look throughout the schematic to see what is attached in these circuits leading up to those tubes. Something is getting blocked and I don't know what it is. Okay, well I found the problem and the problem was me. So what I did, this little disc cap here, I soldered it to that connection versus this connection. They're right next to each other and I must have not caught that. So it's my fault. So now it seems like FM, FM's working pretty well on it. That's good. So we solved one problem, and now I've got another problem, which is common on these Grundigs, which is there is a friction plate where when you switch the, the uh, bands back and forth, there's a little mat of rubber, and that mat of rubber has come loose from this pulley here, so now I can't tune it. <laughs> so I'll need to fix that by putting a little glue on you and letting it set overnight. Meanwhile, I need to put the cover back on that because that's not good to leave that exposed. It's very sensitive. Eating too much cement. With the World Health Organization issuing a report today calling on governments to tighten restrictions on sodium in food. In fact, the Milano County Fairgrounds Vallejo. We can remove your old hot tub. Free delivery of your new hot tub. Hot tub starting at $2,999. Yeah, I've thought about getting a hot tub. It's like fucking pouring rain out there right now, so it's not hot tub weather exactly. Welcome to day four of working on the Grundig. And uh, what I did last night before I went in, and it's kind of hard to see this. And it looks sloppy, but that's okay. I put some Lexel glue to put the rubber pad on the clutch surface back together. And I applied a little bit of that to the uh, the flywheel here. It just gives it a little more grip. I'm using this uh, clip to hold it away from the surface until it cures. In the meantime, we were supposed to be getting torrential rain, but instead it's actually sunny. And so I'm going to take this opportunity to work on the cabinet. I'm going to first go over it with a little damp rag to get the dust and stuff off. And then I'm going to go over it with Old English for light woods. Even though it doesn't really seem to be that scratched, it actually seems to be in pretty good condition. But it just evens anything out if there's any microscopic scratches and abrasions. And then we're going to use some Carnuba car wax and an orbital buffer to really bring back the shine. Man, this is one of the cleanest consoles I've ever worked on. I've done nothing so far, and all it is I used wiped it off with some water or a damp rag. But anyway, I'm going to start using this my handy dandy little drill attachment I'm gonna use a car new paste wax over there and uh, just bring back the sh I mean the shines already perfect but I want to make it even more perfect -er. all right so this is after spending about an hour with the buffer it's hard to film this because it's so freaking shiny but anyway and now it's like glass basically there's no scratches on this at all. Whoever had this took like extraordinarily good care of it. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's about as close to coming out of the factory as I've seen in a long time. And I've seen a lot of nice things lately, so maybe I'm just on a good luck of, run of good luck or something. All right, now it's time to work on the record player. 
it's very clean it's a uh, very much a voice of music clone good god it's clean it doesn't look like it's even used Makes me wonder how many hours this thing actually had on it. Everything is on it is just like pristine. All right, so I took the platter off. The rubber on this friction wheel is like new. See how flexible it is? That's like factory fresh. And the motor's turning really nicely. Let me see how the movement's moving. Oop, not so lucky. So. Whatever oil they used on these back then, especially when it comes to the main uh, gear here, it solidifies. So you kind of have to take this mechanism off and pull that out so you can properly clean off the old oil and put the new stuff in. The motor's okay. I might just freshen up the bearings a little bit with some oil, but I think it's very good mechanical condition. Well, despite how perfect it looks, it's still jammed up. I tried heating and oiling some of the pivot joints, but they're still kind of not moving very easily. So we're going to take the mechanism off. You can remove these by removing this screw, this screw, and these two. And I took some pictures to make sure I can assemble it correctly on my way uh, back to reassembling. And uh, that way we can get to and remove this gear and clean and lubricate all of the little pivot joints here. All right, so I've successfully removed the changer mechanism. I've also removed the C-clip on the top of the main cog here. So what I'm gonna do is the most delicate thing ever, which is use my blowtorch here to heat up the bearing. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna melt all the nasty old grease in there and I'm gonna pour new oil in there Whoops. Too much flame. That's what happens when I'm doing this one-handed. And then I'm gonna put a little turbine oil on there. I'm gonna turn it up. Oh yeah, that's like smooth as butter now. You just do that a few times. Get that worked in really nice. Make sure we get all the old oil out of there. And we'll turn our attention to the tuner, I mean not the tuner, the uh, changer mechanism to make sure it's going to move all freely before we reinstall it. Alright, so I've got the mechanism back together and I've temporarily put in this jerry rig cord so I can plug it into the wall and see if it's going to work or not, or at least cycle. I at least want to see if the motor's going to work, which I think it will. And then I will uh, put the platter back on after I clean it over in the sink do some final oiling and see if it's going to work. All right, I had a weird problem here where I wasn't getting power to the motor from the switch. Sure enough, this wire had come loose from this block here and it was still stuck in there. It was just barely hanging on. Anyway, let me reattach that then we'll test the motor. All right, so I got it kind of stuck up on my spools of wire here. Yeah, it's skating around a little bit. Could be because it's not level. It could also be because the needle's messed up. Or it could be the needle's dirty. I haven't cleaned it. Anyway, it's mechanically. Okay, so it turned out I had it on the 78 setting. Flipped the needle over. <laughs> cleaned it up with a little toothbrush. This is a very filthy record, but it seems to be tracking okay. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do for the evening is clean up the chassis. We also have a burnt out bulb here. I'm going to replace that clean the knobs, clean the uh, piano keys. Then tomorrow I think we'll add the audio input through the tape player connection. And then we'll start considering doing some reassembly because it seems like everything's coming together quite nicely on this guy. Which is nice because I had so many problems before. All right, so I cleaned up the front here. It's looking much better. And now the last thing I'm going to do is run the audio input through. And we have the tape player connector here. Right and left channels. And then the ground is obviously the ground for the incoming audio. I'm running my audio cord through. The tape player playback. And then what we'll do is we'll have this 3.5 millimeter stereo jack so that we can plug in our Bluetooth modules. Or whatever else the future owner decides to use. 
pretty straightforward on this guy. Sometimes these connectors are strange, but this one's very obvious. Right and left channels. All right, welcome back to probably the last day of working on the Grundig. And I did some tests just to make sure my voltages were okay. They are, it seems to be playing reliably. Did clean up the face plate and the knobs and everything. So now it's time to put at least this back in the cabinet. Uh, the record player, I need to do some more work on it. I also added this audio input feature so I can run my Bluetooth. So we're getting there. And uh, also, um, whatever. I'll work on the record player next. Okay, well I got it all back together again. Anyway, it does sound really nice. Meanwhile, here that was Bluetooth. There's a little Bluetooth module and this is radio. And then we'll try out the record player. One of our members, Kyle, worked on this yesterday. And I haven't tried it out yet, but I assume it works. There it goes. Arm comes over. And starts to play the record. Perfect. Anyway, guys, thanks for uh, watching this episode. I knew I know it's been quite a long time since I produced an episode. This one took a little more time, uh, as these consoles tend to do. But um, this is about the most perfect small console I've ever worked on. The quality of the finish and the overall condition is, is basically like factory new. Um, in fact, a few of the members thought that this was fake. They thought that someone had refinished this. They're like, it's too perfect. That can't be the original finish. It's like, no, nope, totally was. Totally is. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. And until the next time something comes across the workbench, I'll see you guys next time. Adios. Mancini. You know what the song is? Rijon. No, it's Mr. Lucky. No, it's not. Anyway, this is Mr. the Lucky. conclusion of this episode of Radio Rama as we disagree about music. <laughs> He's wrong. Anyway, um, the record player is getting the final touches, but it's been a week since I have recorded or uploaded a video, so I just want to go ahead and conclude it now. So I've got uh, Bluetooth running through it. True stereo does work. And then we got FM. That thing should be ready to go right back in. Yeah. Motor started right out. It did. Cold, yeah. Well, well, I sanded the thing now. They, well, you know, they get a varnish on them is actually what it is. Yeah, the record player, basically the motor, had a oh, problem. He's taking video. <laughs> it's okay. But anyway, yeah, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and upload this thing. You don't have to imagine that the record player is in there. And uh, But anyway, it's going to be perfect. It's a perfect piece. It's amazing that the original finish is so perfect. And it's not a refinished cabinet. I'm not going to actually Like this guy, totally refinished. They're wrong. Anyway, uh, thanks so much for watching. Until the next time a radio comes across the workbench. See you guys next time. Bye. Adios. Bye.